Welcome back to Everyday Garage, guys. And in this episode, we're jumping on the 1962 Dodge 300. Now, I picked this thing up a while ago in a sketchy part of town. Let's just say in that area, the teeth are scarce. But here it's been sitting and I think it's been off the road for about 34 years. Now, I'm not really sure about the history and it looks a lot better than just been sitting for three quarters of a decade. But we'll kind of dive in. I really don't know what I'm dealing with. Like I said, the history is kind of convoluted, but I'm excited to get this thing back on the road because I have tons of plans for it. Mainly, I need it to uh, help me take care of my property in the back. So that's the main reason why I got this thing. It's going to be a good little work rig. Now, I'll explain to you exactly why this actually makes it unique and perfect for what I need. But let's just go ahead and jump into it. Now to start this off, of course, we got we got to look at it. We got to see what I have here. Now I have done looked at it a little bit and it's it's pretty solid, you know, minus the, the bullet holes that someone was using for target practice. It has like a little bit of rot in some areas. It's not perfect, but what, what do you expect from an old 60 year old truck? Now, as you can see, it kind of was painted. Uh, it's, it looks like it's been lovingly taken care of, but if you look, it was like a quick little brush job or spray job. It's got overspray everywhere. Now, the story I got on the truck, guys, was this thing was given to the gentleman I got it from as payment for some work he did on an abandoned property. Um, from what I understand, it was the grandfathers of the people that were clearing out the property. And uh, he had pulled it in, it was like a truck that was on, used on the ranch and stuff like that. He pulled it into the barn to do a restoration on it. And unfortunately I think got sick and ended up passing away before it could get finished. But it's out of the barn and now I'm sitting in my backyard. So it's time to get working back on it. This thing is actually in solid shape though, halfway through a restoration. And unfortunately this actually was done by the guy that I got it from. He actually smacked his trailer, I think with it when loading it, which kind of sucks, but we'll get it bent out. And then uh, uh, running board is the same thing, but it's all fixable. But the beds, you know, it's well used. It kind of just matches at this point. So this is, like I said, a D300. So this is a one ton chassis. And I actually, I don't think they actually came with this bed. I think this must've been put on later, but it's actually a rare bed. This is like the nine foot bed. So sitting on here pretty nicely. It's had a lot of modifications. The floor has been uh, welded in. So you should have that wood floor, but they just took a bunch of uh, sheet metal and welded it all in all the way around it's got that old school uh diamond plate bumper this is my wife's she actually comes out here and uh likes to mow down most of the property and you know you don't want to mess with her and apparently i can't throw that now um custom tailgate guys this is actually really cool they did an x pattern here put it on really nice i think they just welded some eighth inch sheet metal so this thing's awesome you can kind of see the weld jobs are they're serviceable let's just leave it at that and uh, this is actually all came with it. This is the gas can that was already in here. It's full of junk. I kind of just took it as was. Like I said, actually the situation where I got this thing was a bit sketchy. So it was uh, the guy that I bought it from immediately left once he got the money. And then I was left with the people that were actually like the property they was at. And then <laughs> long story short, I definitely had to get this thing loaded up and get it out of there. It ended up being a weird situation. Now this is a... Uh, like one of those racks they put on looks like it was also handmade and fabricated and these are like the side panels that go with it spare tire carrier some more blowouts but this is from the inside so i'm not really sure what happened there now like i said it's a one ton so this means it's got the big six lug pattern from back in the day so i think it's a six on 7.25 this is tough to find now as you can tell i don't know if you saw the other side they're actually different tires and I don't know where this one came from. It's, I tried to do like a search on where this particular rim came from because this is massive. I actually had to buy tires for this thing. So these are the Tracker Plus XL. Um, these are 12 by six and a, 16 and a half. Massive tires. So when I found this thing, it was just, it was, as you'll probably see in the thumbnail, it was just sitting on rims. It was <laughs> abandoned. It was in rough shape. So when I came, I had to take all the rims off, go get tires for them. I actually had to get a lug nuts too, as you can tell, cause you know, yeah, lug nuts are all new and shiny. It had nothing. It was just sitting on the rims, but no nuts actually holding anything on. So all that stuff is new for me, which is nice. Cause now the tires are ready to go, but I got the big one back here. And then I had three of the skinnies. Let me see if I could show you these skinny boys over here. So I have three of these, you know, not four matching tires, of course. But what I did was I got three of them. So two on this side, one on the passenger side, and then I got the fat guy back there. That one is gonna be, I also have a duplicate of the fat one. So eventually when we get this thing going, I'll put it on the back so that way we have two matching. And the spare, this odd in guy, this, you know, third wheel, should we say, is gonna go on the spare tire carrier. Now these over here were actually pretty hard to find too, cause these are 215, 75, 
SR17 and a half. Now these are like industrial tires, so I had to find the right ones. These are actually steering tires, so I had to make sure that they could be on the front. So that's why they'll be on the front. And the ones I got in the back are like a 12,000 pound load rating or something crazy, but that's actually why they're on the back. Now, I think why The Last Gentleman had stuff like that on here is because, like I said, this, uh, this truck is unique, is this is a dump bed, which is a big reason why I bought this rig. If I can come up here and show you guys, it's a chain and binder down over here is how it keeps the front down. So I think you just take that. And then if you'll see, it's PTO driven. So which makes this thing awesome. It's I really hope we can get that thing running because I, I really need that. Then I could actually load this thing up and dump all the dirt and rock and all the plans I have for the back. So that's why I think why he put these big load rated tires and rims back here so he can really load this thing down. Now let's finish up looking around. We'll come over here. This side is really, really nice guys. Like there's little to no rot. Like there's a little bit here at the bottom of the door. You can tell, but I think it's been like painted over or bondoed. But not that bad and the interior is solid guys the doors really good this seat is <laughs> i mean just awesome i have literally not been in here at all so i just saw the seat i saw it kind of had everything complete and i just loaded this thing up i haven't gone through any of this stuff looks like all the door handles which is good because i was kind of curious if these just roll down Ooh, might be stuck Oh yeah, it's stuck. Oh, no, it's not stuck. That's the open and close because I don't know what I'm doing. This is the window. There we go. Nice. Helps when you know what you're doing. In the glove box, which I haven't opened at all, is actual cardboard. That's funny. It looks like they just took cardboard and formed it, which is not a bad idea, which is I think I'm leaving. And is that a paint marker? I'm actually really happy to find this because it didn't have one. I did see that the shift knob over here, but I'm not a huge fan of these shift knob guys. I just don't like shifting like that. I like to, you know, grab the ball. So we'll just come over here and put this there. There you go, come on. It doesn't really fit that well. We'll figure that out later. We got our windshield wipers, which is good because they're not over there. There's our PTO. So we'll see if we can get that boy going. Nice to have the door covers here. So that's gonna be good in there pretty solid like I said the guy was restoring it so even the dash is kind of painted but it's like five different colors guys so you got the blue here you got the black here you have this color and then up here is a totally different color and that's on that side of the door <laughs> it does have red over here so we got the the blue and the red if we just had some white this would be all the right colors and then speaking of all the different colors guys you can see the frame over here is red and it's actually shiny paint too this guy had all the different colors. The wheel wells are actually white, so it looks like we might have everything we need. But it's look really good shape, not a lot of rot. This truck's awesome. Now I'm jumping over here. I wanted to actually look inside on the driver's side, but I had to take this off. Now this was a bunch of tape and stuff I had thrown on here because the window's a bit busted out, guys. Now, as you can tell, again, another color. So <laughs> this guy definitely couldn't decide, but we start fixing on this thing, we'll kind of change it up, make it all one color. I think uh, I might go with this one. I actually like that a lot. Now over here, we got all the other stuff. More window regulators, uh, carburetor, looks like, I don't know, weed whacker carburetor? What is it, a wall burrow? Well, that's nice. Um, ignition switch, all the other stuff. There's gonna be a lot of issues, guys, I'll tell you that. At least we have keys for it, but I don't know how well that's all gonna work. Now, before we go more inside on what's going on in there, let's finish checking out the rest. The front's really nice. I actually do like the blackout on here. The bumper's really nice. You can see all the overspray. So I'll have to get that all cleaned up. But man, the truck's in solid shape. A lot of rust up here in the front. You can see where the Bondo is, but it's solid, guys. Now, let's jump in here and actually see what's going on under the hood. Now, full disclosure, I've actually looked under here. So I know what it is. There we go. Uh, oh, that goes way higher than I remember. Nice. Oh, oh, oh yeah. What? That's like fully vertical. <laughs> it, how far back does this thing go? <laughs> that's nice. Well, check that out, guys. I'm not sure if that's normal. You guys let me know if you're familiar with these Dodges, but this thing goes all the way back. There's a little bit of dentage from uh, you know, overextension, but that's pretty awesome. I bet there's supposed to be a, some kind of stop there. But what we got here, guys, is the Leaning Tower of Power, the Slant 6. This is going to be the uh, 225 model. 
looks really, really complete. And again, guys, just really, really great shape. Usually these are all rotted out. Battery tray is nice. Solid, what do we got in here? Anything? Is that gonna come off? Oh yeah, that's dry as a bone. Hopefully no leaks. And those bullet holes you saw on the fender, and it popped out here. Now hopefully it didn't hit the block. I did look when I picked it up to see if there were any holes in the block, but I couldn't see anything, so hopefully we're good. It's got a one barrel, electric choke, alternator. It's been switched over. I think these are generators still in 62, but I could be wrong. The old style, um, I actually do have the other part that goes here for the, uh, the jack. This is where this would go, which is super solid. Looks like they've already looped the heater core, so it's probably leaking on the inside. But man, this thing does look good. Now, I haven't touched it at all, so that's not me. It looks like this was left off, but it must have been recent because it's in solid shape. The gentleman that I got it from said he never could get it running. He did try, so you're gonna see some evidence of that, but he said all he could get it to do was turn over at one point, so I know it isn't stuck. So let's just go ahead and jump in. All right, just jump it in, check the oil first. Oh, it's not bad, it's super black. Yeah, not bad. It smells like gas really bad all over my nose, that's nice. Nice and thick. I'll just wipe that off, check it again. Yeah, it looks good. A little low, but good enough to start it on. And yes, this is a truck, like I said, I'm be keeping, so we'll start it on this oil and I'll change it once uh, we, if we can get it fired. <sighs> All right, let's just jump into it, guys. Let's see if I can get this thing into the battery holder. This, this bad boy is definitely too big, but we'll just lay it in the box for now. Let's get all the battery cables and check that out. They're actually the right colors. That's kind of nice. Oh, right here. Ah, fits just fine. So we'll put red there. It's kind of... Ooh. This started right up. All right. Well, it's turning over as soon as I touch it, so something's miss hooked up wrong there. Well, at least we know it turns over now, and the starter's good. And that's hot. All right, I'm gonna have to look at this. All right, after a little messing around, I kind of figured, I think this solenoid here, the starter solenoid here is bad. So we got the cable running from the battery down to the solenoid on the starter. And then this is supposed to be the uh, starting wire or trigger wire, however you want to call it. But it was right here. And if I put it there, it'll turn it. But it must be broken inside because this is, thing comes from the key and then once you turn the key, it sends power to here it is how it's supposed to work. But we'll leave it off now. And now I can just touch these over to start it. So that's kind of set up. But now we got power going to everything and we can kind of check to see if everything works. Already kind of came inside the cab though. And um, our uh, situation here is a lot worse than I thought it was. So this, this thing's broken. So if you can see, I got the key that was in it and it's all beat up. So this won't turn at all. So we won't be able to start from the key. Maybe this way. Yeah, that's not doing anything. And we got a couple tabs, like this tab is broken off it, so this thing's kind of shot. I'll have to chase out the wires. It does come with another ignition switch, but there's no key for it. it just have this Saturn key, which I don't think is gonna work, so that's trash. I did find this key though, which I think is to the gas can, which is kind of nice. I thought we were gonna have to drill that out. Well, well, I think it's to this. Come on, yes. Turn slightly, maybe. Oh yeah, there we go. Come on. You were out, but why are you? What's going on with you? Grrr. Okay, we'll come back to that later. As far as everything else goes, probably not gonna have power if we can't turn the key though. So it's probably not gonna have any power here. Yeah, so nothing's really gonna make a difference in here. But I'll show you guys, we got all the gauges, the fuel, amp, temp and oil. Oh, I don't see anything on the oil, so that's probably blown out. There's no gauge and that looks like it's fried in there. 75,000 miles. Now that might actually be 75,000 original miles because from what I, like I said, it was only ever used as a work rig. So you're not putting a ton of miles on it. Now, coming back in, you can see all the rat turds. So this thing's been sitting a while. Might want to try to brush all this out. Can't get a vacuum out into my back property, but <laughs> let's see what we can do. Let's see. Oh yeah, we're all freed up and ready to go. Just need to come over here. Should we check the points? Or should we just see if we're lucky and we have spark? Well, the caps are already off. Might as well see if we can sand them out. 
Well, I was gonna come in here and send them out, but check this out, guys. Now, there is no power going to this because the key's off, so otherwise <laughs> you could really shock yourselves. That is brand new points, which is probably why this was off. So like I said before, the guy was trying to get it started, but obviously couldn't, so we got lucky. A lot of brand new parts. I remember when I said I got lucky, so I went to go try to put the cap back on. Well, first thing I noticed is uh, brand new spark plug wires. I'm gonna guess that's a new cap too, but it's just been sitting there. Or a new rotor at least, but that doesn't fit on there anymore. So either the rotor's too tall and the wrong one, or the cap's too short. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Now, the upside is, is I wanted this truck to be on the road as soon as I can, so I do have a bunch of new parts for it. I can't wait to get that thing on the road. So, coming to the storage bin here. Shed, whatever. Uh, come on, there we go. And a lot of this, well, a lot of this is also for the 53, but a lot of this is for the Dodge. Let's see what we got. Well, I did find all the ignition part box that I had, but the downside is I think it looks like the same rotor. Now, I do have a cap too. But besides being blue, that looks to be the same. Let's go check it out. Well, after fiddling with it a little bit, I realized that I just didn't have the rotor indexed right. I didn't have that little piece where it needed to go. So once I got that, it actually fit right. Imagine that, you put parts on, things fit. We're just gonna pretend I didn't do that and just let this sit right over here. All right, the next thing we really need to do, guys, is see if we got any spark. So what I did was I took the factory wire off since we can't turn the key, and I ran just a wire to the hot side of the coil, which is over here, and I'll just drop it on the battery. And then for over here, I just ran my, uh, my little snap-on switch here to the solenoid and then over here to the wire. So that way we can just kind of, you know, it's supposed to work when I push the button. Oh, it would help if I hooked up the battery. Man, I am winning with choices today. There we go. Just put that there. Now, nothing. Now, nothing. All right, making me look bad. All right, let's try that for the fourth time. There we go. Stuff this in here. All right, now what's left is just to check sparks. So I pulled one of the wires and we're just gonna ground it to the alternator there using the screwdriver. Turn it over, see what we got. All right, we got spark. This is gonna be pretty straightforward. Now, I normally I would probably check plugs or something, but I'm ever, after looking at everything, it looks pretty good. So let's just throw some gas down and see what it can do. I was about to try to fire up the truck and guess who I found but the little shop dog hanging out in the cab. Just trying to get in the shade because it, it's a bit toasty out here today, guys. Yeah, choke's not working great, but I got just a little bit of gas left. So we'll put some zest down it. There we go. Let's see what happens. Oh, right away. Wow, is it idling? Oh, that's awesome. Let's see, put some down the, the vent here. There we go. Let's see, yeah, fill that bowl up one more time. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Check that out, guys. Oh, it's so silent, too. That sounds awesome. Let's try to get that out of the way. Man, that sounds so good, guys. It's silent. There's no lifter ticking. Let's one more time. Let's see, a little bit more choke. Okay, more gas. Move. Oh. See if I can get it to idle for a little bit. That thing fired right up. Man, I am impressed. That is a runner. Barely had to get it going. I mean, the engine does look good, but looks can definitely be deceiving. That was super quiet, sounded super healthy. Now what I want to do is see if I can get it to idle. Now we do have the fuel pump down here, but I don't really want to deal with that gas tank yet. So this has actually already been popped off and 
it's already pretty petrified. So let's go ahead and pop it off here, get a little auxiliary fuel system hooked up and hear this bad boy purr. All right, before I actually go throwing like an electric pump on, let's see if this pump on here works. Looks like this comes from the tank right here. So if I just throw some auxiliary hose on it, let's see how it goes. Ooh, that might be a new pump too. That's nice and shiny. There we go. All right, we're all hooked up and I'm running to the auxiliary tank. I know that's supposed to be uh, gravity fed, but <laughs> gravity's not on my side right now. So we're gonna leave that like that, fire it up, fill the bowl up and see if we can get this thing to idle. All right, get the coil hot again. Let's see if we can fill the vent a little bit. Oh yeah, we're spilling gas everywhere. There we go. See if the pump works. There you go. You gonna idle? <laughs> it's idling! Check that out. Oh, don't die, don't die. Ah. Oh. Are we pulling fuel? Come on, idle for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're pulling fuel. I don't think we're pulling fuel, guys. So I went ahead and pulled that line off. It's still dry, but let's see if it'll pull over or uh, spit some fuel out is what I'm trying to say. Dump a little bit here and see what happens. Come on. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna call that pump dead, which is fine. I do have another pump, but we'll deal with that later. Let's go ahead and just hook up the electric pump and get this thing idling. All right, guys, I got it all hooked up. So here's our gas can running to our uh, fuel pump all the way out to the carb. Hopefully I don't get it caught in the fan because that would suck. And then just throw it in here with the battery. Let's see, there, oh, come on. Go in there. Perfect. Oh yeah. Heard the pump change, so it's getting fuel. Oh, you can hear it. Oh, there we go. Put a little bit of gas. Let's see if this thing will fire up. There we go. <laughs> Sounds so good. Man, that sounds so good, guys. I'm super excited. Okay, so that sounded good, revved good. It was good to go. Let's go ahead and change in the oil, get some coolant in here, see if we can get this thing up to temp. All right, I got my cardboard, little backer there. Toss that under. And just a little three quarter inch bolt. Now, I can't find an oil filter on this thing. So I'm gonna guess this early 62 model didn't have one. So we should just be draining this out. Oh yeah. That's super watery, actually. Oh yeah, it smells a lot like gas. There was, ooh. You see all that stuff on the, the uh, what's the drain plug there? That's a lot of crap, yikes. Yeah, we're over full here. I don't have another can. Let me, let me run before this fills up. All right, well, the oil is all drained out and I definitely caught every drop of that. But uh, I got the drain plug back in. There was a lot of metal on that drain plug, guys. That is unfortunate. But it sounded good, so we'll kind of see. Let's go ahead and fill this thing back up. All right, now the internet says this is only supposed to be four to five quart capacity, but after every, all that oil that came out, like I said, that I definitely caught, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be a little bit more. So we'll pour this whole jug in, 
and just kind of check on it. Well, it actually ended up needing eight quarts. So it's got two gallons in there and it's just barely at the ad line. So this has got to have some kind of like big truck oil pan, of course, but at least I got both. So that's filled up. All right, now let's, okay, am I good? All right, now let's see if the coolant system is leaking. Now I probably should put water in this first, but of course I don't have a jug for water. So we'll go ahead and use the good stuff and hope it doesn't leak out or spill it everywhere, jeez. Great, now that I spilled it everywhere, I can't tell if it's leaking. <laughs> awesome. Okay, that took less than half a quart. Half a gallon, that's the word I've been looking for. That means it must have already had some in there. All right, well then now it's got more. Leave the cap off for now, just in case. All right, hook everything back up. Let's get this back on there. And uh, let's see if we need gas, we'll fire up. <laughs> Fires up real nice. Circulating went down. Not great though. Man, it runs so good. Air cleaner on. Let's see if we got oil pressure. Yeah, that oil gauge doesn't work at all in any way. All right, while it's sitting there idling like a sewing machine, let's see if that alternator actually works. Let's see, 12.38, uh, maybe not. Let's try to rev it. It heard me talking about it. Now, well, a good way to tell, voltage is dropping with it off. Let's see what happened. It was idling down real low and I was gonna think about turning in the idle screw, but that thing is really far in already. I'll crank it a little bit more and uh, probably gonna have to look into some kind of carb rebuild on this. Although it does run pretty good. All right, let's see how it does with the idle turned up. There we go. So back to checking on the alternator. I don't think it's working at all, even if I rev it. So we're definitely gonna have to pick up one of those, but I think the thermostat finally opened. We're moving a lot of coolant. Let's see if the temp gauge works. Yeah, and there you guys have it. A great running, great idling slant six. I'm super excited about this, guys. Like I said, it's been off the road for 34 years. Now looking at it and hearing that thing run, it's probably fired up before. In all honesty, I just have no history on it. Now I say 34 years because they sent me uh, tags, the guy that I got it from. It's not on the car, but he sent me a picture of the license plate. It was tagged, last tagged in 90. But if I had to guess, it definitely ran before. But let's see if we can get this thing to drive now. I came in here, I kind of messed around a little bit. The clutch does, oh, was doing clutch things. Uh-oh. There we go. Ooh, that's not good. And then brakes. Yeah, nothing. All right, so the hydraulic clutch is that master cylinder there. It runs down through here, comes out here. How about you guys look out for me? Let me, see if you, let me know if you see anything. Let's see if I can put a light on for you. Yeah, that's not working at all. Dang it, that's the downside to hydraulic clutches. All right, let's see if we can pop this master cylinder out and see if there's anything in there. Yeah, let's see, just pop that bad boy. Yep. All right, dry as a bone. Think it'd be worth trying to put some fluid in there. All right, let's just fill that with some fluid. See what happens. All right. Anything? No, come on. All right, guys, I got some bad news. So you saw me pumping on it and I've been pumping on it for a while now. If you come up in here, I don't know if you guys can see, it's starting to leak out right there. Which is fine, it could be leaky, but it's also not pumping up. So that master cylinder is shot. It's not moving any fluid. So then I was like, all right, do we have brakes at least? 
I cannot get that cap off. I have destroyed it. I am sitting here just banging it out, just breaking it off. That thing doesn't want to come either, which means we we don't have brakes either, which sucks. So no clutch, no brakes really limits our chances of driving. But what I did do was I came up underneath here and I got our chains and binders off. So that means let's go ahead and see if this PTO works. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to work. And there's no instruction, so I have no idea what I'm doing. Nothing. Let's see. All right, I'm fiddling with it back and forth and I've got nothing on here. You can see the shaft turning there for the PTO. <laughs> but I'm not getting that thing to engage at all. Not sure what the issue is. I was hoping this thing worked. It's the only reason I got this truck. Looking like it only gives me two options, forward and back. But, oh, there we go. That went into gear. What did that do? What about back? All right, guys, I can get the uh, intermediate shaft for the PTO turning, but I cannot get the bed to work. So chances are it doesn't work. We'll fix that though. That is gonna be on the list. We'll get this truck running. So that means no clutch, no PTO and no brakes. <laughs> and really guys, it's hard to try to drive in this field that I have here. There's a lot of obstacles. We gotta go up this hill just to get out. Brakes or clutch would be nice, but let's go ahead and be reckless. Let me clean everything up. Let's throw, see if I can snake the fuel system inside. And let's see if we can just get this thing to go back and forth. Okay, so super sketchy fuel system engaged. I got it running just where we had it, but now it's going inside the cab sitting right there in the passenger seat and then i have a ignition wire kill switch kind of routed in so into here up through there so we'll just start it up and see if we can get this thing to drive i'm gonna head in that direction because it's uphill and probably start it in gear come on girl Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's see how sketchy this is. Oh, I think the clutch works a little bit now. Let's see. No. There's, yeah, that's working. Woo! <laughs> I popped the clutch. Woo! <laughs> Dang it. All right. The clutch is working slightly. We might be able to get this thing to work. How do I get out? I'm locked in. Now that I know the clutch is slightly working, as first. Woo Come on. Oh, I'm stuck. Well, we're stuck, guys. She saw that tire was spinning. I think we still have traction on that side, though. But the main issue is over here. Yeah, that's pointed in that direction. And that is not pointed in that direction. Yeah, I forgot uh, when I bought this thing and the tie rod was busted on it. So uh, we're all, you know, we're doing this. So with the lack of traction in the back and the way that this is pointed, we're not going anywhere. So what I think I'm gonna do, is see if I can get this pointed in the right direction working right. Okay, this is gonna suck. Come on, get in there. And to make it worse, Part of the tie rod that's broken off by the wheel is actually, there we go, jammed up against the brake hub and the rim. So I gotta pop the rim off real quick. Yeah, and of course I'm jammed up. Jesus. In the uh, 
the most awkward area. There we go. Come on. Oh, nope. That's going up the wrong area. Let's see. Can I get this tire? No, it's jammed up against the rim. Let's see. Oh, no, I got it. Oh, I don't need to take the tire off. That is a solid win. All right, guys. This is where the tie rod's broken off, obviously. So I'm just going to, you know, the best fix I know is just a little bit of duct tape right there. there oh, oh, come on. And yeah, there we go. That's, that's the good stuff. A little bit of extra, you know, you really want to give it all the strength. There we go. That's called it. Angle iron that I cut. There we go. No vice grip there. Oh yeah, nice and strong. Yeah, solid. All right, let's try this again. Clutch in. Ah, come on. There we go. All right, come on. You want to engage? What's going on? There it is. <laughs> what happened? Well guys, yeah, that failed again. But check out what turned on. We got headlights. You gotta take the wins. I'll take headlights any day. All right guys, I don't know how, but the uh, duct tape and vice grips failed. So this is where it's gonna be. It's kind of where it's gonna sit guys, but check it out. It has driven out of where it's been sitting for months and it probably drove under its, first, under its own power for the first time in almost 34 years, guys. All right, guys, well, we got it running, sort of driving for the first time in 34 years. I'm super excited, guys. Sounds great, revs great. Seems like it's gonna drive pretty good once we can get that tie rod situation worked out. So I think I got a good truck here. Now, if you like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because in the next video we're gonna bring forward, we're gonna get this thing street legal. We're gonna running, well, we're out of it running, stopping, PTOing, clutching, you know, all the stuff it needs to do. I've got a ton of parts for it just to get this thing back on the road. It is a super bummer that that dump bed doesn't work, but like I said, we'll get it working. I need it for all the stuff on the back property. So again, guys, if you want to see more of this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, if I can do any of this, so can you. I'll catch you guys on the next one.